now is spot removal is not very good in the whip mirror matches because it's about whips and hornet queens and cards like heroes downfall and murderous cut they aren't really that great so if people cu start cutting those cards from their deck to make room for more haymakers more creatures more things to synergize with whip that makes it much better for blue white heroic which cares about removal spells but not really about blockers as they have a number of ways to grow creatures to too large of a size or just ignore blockers altogether with things like aqueous form all right, Steven Mann starts out on a temple. Be Tranquil Cove from Joe Lissette. Yeah, kind of a lot of mulliganing here. Mann started the game on five cards on the play. Lissette is on six on the draw. So he's up two. But we'll see if both players can get hands that they like. Should be important. Uh, Joe, what, what appears to be a solid mix of lands and spells right now, including what I have to imagine is a very well-worn flooded strand. <laughs> Absolutely. He has two creatures. He has a Seeker of the Way and a Favored Hoplite. A lot of times this heroic deck, you are protecting that one creature very hard. One of the best cards in this deck to that end is God's Willing. It's, it's one of the most important features of this deck. It makes it so efficient to, to protect your creatures, and once you start getting Ordeal of Thassa and other enchantments online, things quickly grow out of the range of blockers. So it really puts your opponent in the squeeze. They need to have a removal spell right now because blockers down the road don't really matter. Yeah, the cards that Lissette needs to be wary of in Man's deck are copies of Hero's Downfall, which are there too, four copies of Murderous Cut, and the three copies of Hornet Queen. All of those will take the wind out of the sails of one of these beefed-up creatures. Yep. Or heroes, if you will. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. We'll be here all weekend. Oh, man. <laughs> Temple for Joe does mean that he would have to tap down to put it in, or he wouldn't be able to leave up God's Willing as much as he might want to. He, he's got the pieces, but he's pretty slow out of the gates right now. Well, the other line of play he has access to is just casting Seeker of the Way this turn, so he has a second creature in play. Even if Steven untaps and kills one of them, not really the end of the world. He's going to go way more aggressive than that. He's going to God's Willing the favorite hoplite to, to get it moving. Pro green. Sees a hero of Aroas. And he'll put it to the bottom. What this does do is next turn, if he, if he makes the Ordeal of Thassa in his hand, he'll get to crack it and draw to that turn. Yep. So that's a play that I would say otherwise seems fairly strange, especially in, against a Corsair. And if he has a second God's Willing in his hand, then he still has protection available. Yeah, once he gets his creature up to a 4-5 and cracks the ordeal, that doesn't mean the stubborn denial in his hand will also become a hard counter. So it's a, a bit of a non-intuitive play, but there's a lot of upside here, depending on how things break for Joe. Polluted Delta for man. He'll get on the attack off zone. Swings coarser. And it looks like he'll go for Sidisi Brood Tyrant. One way to answer the heroic deck, of course, is to just race it. Sidisi, very good in the, in the mid game. It's a lot of power for four mana. It is. It's still a tough deck to race because once the ordeal start adding up, it does not take that long for even something like a hoplite to get to lethal. Both these players almost certainly competing in the Players' Championship two weeks from now. Joe with his spot already locked up and Steven in a great position to get one of the eight at-large bids at the end of the year. And we have Sidisi Brood Tyrant. And we will go ahead and can look more at that, what's at stake here this week and next for the Players' Championship. CDC does mill a creature for man. And we back over to Joe. There's seven power on the board across from him, so there's some concern on Joe's side. Another way that these decks can, can make up a damage race is with Ordeal of Heliod, one copy in Joe's deck, and of course four copies of Heliod's Pilgrim to go find it. And it's Ordeal of Thassa will be the play from Joe. It's what he was setting up for last turn with the gods willing. Target's favorite hoplite. Ordeal will tick up, go to three, break, and Joe will get two cards. At some point, I imagine here, man will start chump blocking with zombies. Well, I, I think his ideal scenario is DC attacks and generates a chump blocker every turn. Right. And that way, he instead of pushing five a turn, he's pushing seven a turn. Right. That's a three-turn clock instead of two. 
And Joe leaving land number five on top of his deck, and I think the reason for that is he wants to play uh, Heliod's Pilgrim next turn, find an ordeal of Heliod, gain 10, and try to win the damage race that way. Corsair Crew fixed the draw from Man. See in his hand, he also has a copy of Murderous Cut. Doomwake Giant waiting on top. Be a swing for seven of men. It's just going to mill the Doomwake, get another 2 2. It's nice to know guaranteed that you're getting the zombie when you're in man situation. Yeah, Corsair plus a DC is a lot of really nice synergies here. And Lissette drops to 11 on the attack. It'll be Corsair of Groupix for Steven. Steven just trying to remain as patient as possible with that murderous cut. The writing on the wall is that, you know, it's probably not going to resolve as long as Joe has a mana up. And he's hoping that he can induce Joe to tap low. Seventeen to eleven, man leads. He does have a black up for murderous cut, so we know Joe has that one covered in a couple of different ways. God's willing and stubborn denial. Although Joe is trying to set up a, a turn of Heliod's Pilgrim for ordeal of of Heliod, that is his whole. That's all of his mana. So he goes with that line. The murderous cut probably ends the game. And you have to think that Joe knows that one. That he's he'd be taking a big risk if he goes for that line. Yeah, I, I don't think the game is in such dire straits that he needs to do that right now. Swings at the favorite hoplite. That's four damage if Steven chooses to take it. Sidisi really shining this game. Yeah, it's been great. Playing a lot of pressure and giving uh, Steven a lot of chump blockers, too. And Steven will take the four, drops to 13. Much better, I think, than Siege Runner would have been in the same game. Yeah, it's done a lot more work. Seeker of the Way is the next play for Lissette and Hero of Aroas. Leaves a hand of Stubborn Denial, Heliod's Pilgrim, and God's Willing. Doesn't set up the Heliod's Pilgrim play. I think he still wants to leave up the Supper Denial here. Because the way the board is right now, Joe is looking at lethal. So he has to block. And this makes it pretty attractive for Steven to try to fire off a removal spell, I feel. So he can afford to wait one more turn. So if he finds land number six, then he has a lot of protection for that same line of play. And in fact, he doesn't even need to do that next turn because the Hero of Aroas discounts the enchantment by one, so he can still do everything with Severed Denial. Oh, you're right. If he leaves the hero alive, then he can just make that play next turn, even if he doesn't top deck the land. All-out swing by Steven. He first gains two off that land more wastes. Mills another copy of Sidisi, which means another zombie in play. And still tie Charm on top of the deck. That's another pinpoint removal spell. Yep. So this swing is for 11 exactly. So Lissette's going to have to block somewhere. He has to decide, is it better to discount that ordeal, or, to, or is it better to possibly have lifelink on Seeker? Or do you just trade them both? He can just put a double block in front of the Sidisi. That's an option that he has. And whichever creature Joe gets to keep is probably fine by him. And if Steven goes for a removal, like a double block here makes it very attractive for Steven to try to use a removal spell. Yes. And then you get to make use of your Stubborn Denial here for good value. He's going to go ahead and chump Sidisi and trade with a zombie. And he's, this is dangerous. He's just going to go for the God's Willing. And that's, this is going to end up really poorly for him. Yeah, he's, well, he's going to lose his hoplite, which I guess maybe isn't that bad. May, you know, this hero of Aros isn't that much worse than a, than a favored hoplite. Yeah, there's so many different things going on, it's hard to know. We're, we're working with information because we know each other's hands. My instinct would have been to probably just run a double block on Sidisi uh, because it's likely to, if Steven has a removal spell, it makes it very attractive for him to go for it. And you definitely get to keep at least one of your two creatures. Yeah. And if he makes a move, then you get to keep both, which is great.
Yeah, the God's Willing didn't catch anything, I guess, with this line. Well, it does pump the Seeker of the way and eats a zombie. So he gains three and makes some inroads on the board. And seems in a cast murderous cut on, it looks like, Seeker of the Way of all creatures. It's interesting. There were good arguments for Steven to kill all three of those. He can deny yep. life gain. He can kill the biggest creature. Or he can save his Sidisi. Life gain turns out to be the deciding factor. Joe will take eight. Sidisi will die. Joe Scry, the card is Defiant Strike. Don't think he's keeping that one. Although the way this breaks for Joe, it's still he's still in pretty good shape because the next turn he does get to Pilgrim, Poor Ordeal of Heliod, gain ten, and still have Summer Denial left over. And Steven next turn is only attacking four ten. So the the ordeal is a is a wash on Steven's combat next turn. Yeah. Do you think if you're Steven then you need to keep the Sidisi alive? Because that's, you know, he's going to run out of chump blockers now that he doesn't have a Sidisi. Well, it's not clear if Ordeal is necessarily the only card that Steven's playing around right now. Sure. Could be something like Spectre Ward if we've seen. Yeah, th I mean, there's... Uh, I mean, that's the most dangerous card here just because it's the easiest way for Joe to catch back up, but... Here we are from Joe. Heliod's Pilgrim. There's just a lot of different things for Steven to play around here is, is part of the problem. You're absolutely right. It's going to be Ordeal of Heliod. Now you have to decide where it goes. I like diversifying a little bit. I think I would get it on the hero because you still get the, the third counter this turn. You get one from the heroic trigger, and then you get another one from the attack trigger, and you're not all in on one threat. And because Steven has a sea of chump blockers, I think it's important to try to create two big threats. I agree. He's going to go all in on one, though so that he can leave back Hero to block. This, this makes some sense, too. I can get behind this. Joe goes to 15, six damage in on Steven, and now Steven's down to nine. Joe does have Stubborn Denial up for that Sultai charm. And I guess the way the board is, is currently constructed, Steven doesn't really have an on-board attack except for attack with both coursers. If he's attacking, he's losing a zombie to the 3-3. Three -three. Joe will pass. Yeah, I think Steven is still contemplating a chump block here. Okay. So he has the one zombie back. Yeah. Can he afford to go to nine? There's a lot of there's a lot of danger here, especially when your opponent is a six power creature that suddenly just Stratus walks and Defiant strikes, for example, and then you're dead. It's nine. Right. No, the set can kill you out of nowhere. He's draw a Sultai Charm. Next card up is Sylvan Carry added. That's not going to be very helpful. And if you're man yet, you have to think here that the Sultai Charm is no good. I don't know. You've seen two copies of God's Willing. It would be a lot for Joe to have another, another reactive spell here. There also, there's also the well, issue of what else is the plan here. Here's what I'm thinking. If Joe did not have an answer to the Sultai Charm he knew about, that ordeal would have gone on here over Rois. No, that's, that's a fair point. So if he's putting all his eggs in one basket, I'm worried that he knows something I don't. Because yeah. this play looks really bad against Sultai Chan. Yeah. That said, man may just have to go for it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you can see his expression there. He is... He does not look like someone who is confident in this board state. Well, he can't attack right now, and he can't block either. So he's got to, the way yeah. that things are currently going are, is not sustainable. So he may just have to make a move. And this is where that ability on Favored Hoplite is so relevant. When you target Favored Hoplite, he does not take damage that turn. So you think, hey, Steven could just throw everybody in front of Favored Hoplite. But that, all that takes is one targeting spell from Joe to knock that one down. Yeah, it's not safe. And Stubborn Denial does get the Sultai Charm. Looks like another Defiant Strike to draw for Joe. Now Joe has to weigh what he wants, what all he wants to attack with. The Hoplite's definitely a freebie. And then uh, the Hero is a little bit more dangerous to attack with, but 
there's so many different cards that uh, Steven has to play around here that he still may not block appropriately against the hero. So I like putting it to the test. The worst case scenario is you trade off the hero for probably at least a courser, maybe more. And best case scenario is, is way better than that. Yeah, you can for sure trade it off for more than the courser. With, if you're willing to Defiant Strike it twice. Yeah. Let's see, man's going to chump the hoplite, it looks like. Maybe if he doesn't block the hoplite here, he's dead. Correct. Yeah, playing against Blue Eye Heroic is so hard. There's just so many tricks. And right now, jo Joe has probably the worst possible hand from Steven's side of the table, which is two copies of Divine Strike. He has two targeted spells inside of combat. And they draw cards. It's, yes. Yeah. So he's going to throw every chump block at the favorite hoplite and attempt to kill the Hero of Aros. Joe's going to target Hero of Aros. That makes it up to a 5-4. He'll draw. It Joe still needs to order blockers here. And this is important because he's working with some unknown information. He doesn't know what these Defiant Strikes are going to yield, so... Yeah, Steven's stopping him and asking him to order blockers. Right now, I do not believe Joe can save his hero. He's just killing things. Correct. Draws a land. Fine, strike it again. Now it goes up to a 7-5. But if there's God's willing or feet of resistance here. And there you have, that is God's willing. <laughs> Perfect. Now, he can use it that way. He may also want to hang on to God's willing just as a, a way to push one attacker through later. I like, Not, okay. I like doing this just because he knows that Steven is drawing a courser next turn. Oh, That's sorry, I, I carry added rather. He's drawing essentially a blank, so. And he'll ship to the bottom. And this is why the ordering blockers matter so much. The way that things worked out, if Joe had ordered courser, courser first, he would have gotten both the coursers. Now, he was just, he was assuming that he wasn't going to draw anything particularly good here, and I, I think the way he ordered blockers is correct, but that's why it's important to get it out of the way first. Down to just a courser and a zombie for man. He'll draw carry added, top card, hero's downfall. Not a shabby draw. It's still not a long-term solution. But uh, right. to get back in the same, Steven's going to have to draw a removal spell to removal spell. Yeah, right now, Joe has no God's Willings left. I mean, well, he only has one left in his deck, actually. Two copies of Feet of Resistance as well, and one more Stubborn Denial. So still some productive draws, but this hero's downfall is likely to kill something. I like, I like, really like Steven here, trying to figure out what he can attack with. He knows that, you know, he's going to have to chump block with the, with the carry added. He doesn't need to chump block twice, and it's important for him to be attacking. And the draw here, a real good one. It is Heliod's Pilgrim from Lisette. Yeah, a lot of good options with this. Because of the hero's downfall on top of the deck, it's not great to get the Aqueous form, but he can just go get another Ordeal of Thassa at the worst. Yeah, Ordeal of Thassa. Stratus Walk isn't even terrible. It doesn't draw two, but it draws one, and it gets a guy through unblocked, which is pretty valuable. He has man down to nine. If he gets Stratus Walk, he can put man to two. Actually, he can put him to one, because he... Yeah. Put him to one. That's how he's gonna swing both his creatures. Doesn't need to make give the one of them evasion, really. Right. Man goes down to three. Joe will play Heliod's Pilgrim. Now the the one ofs in his deck are Aqueous Form, Ordeal of Heliod, and Stratus Walk, correct? Yes. And he'll go with the Stratus Walk. Gives a creature flying, makes it so it can only block flying, and draws a card. 
To be honest, I, I'm not even really down on the idea of putting that on one of the Heliod's Pilgrims. Because you effectively generate a third thing that needs to get killed. Yeah, it seems decent. Hero's downfall, the draw for man. Landmore wastes for free. Man goes to four. Next card, Polluted Delta. That one's not going to be much help. I think Stevens has still got at least a turn left between his blockers and... But I guess he cannot beat the Stratus Walk, and he's going to go ahead and pack that one in. He'd have to chump away his whole board, and he knows his next draw is no help. Sure. So game one goes over to Lissette. And it's an impressive game because that's one that I thought was looking very good for man, especially with the Sidisi hitting each turn. And that block that Joe made where it looked like he was giving up some of his board. I mean, uh, things were not looking good there for Joe, but... It just goes to show you, once that deck gets something good going on offense, you can't really block anymore. And Joe is able to hold the ground off just by making a 3-3 three, three and threatening some other pump spells. So uh, Joe was able to turn that around. And that's an interesting dimension of the blue-white heroic deck I don't think enough people give it credit for, is you can win seven and eight turn games. It's not like Boss Sly, where you had to have them dead by turn four. They're not dead at all. You can go long, because the creatures you make are so big, you draw cards off Ordeal of Thassa, and uh, you have more staying power than I think a lot of people expect. So we go toward game two. Steven, we'll go to Man's sideboard first. Can look for more interaction. Probably try to overload on removal if he can. Um, and he's a little light on this. He has a Farika God of Affliction that can make Death Touchers, which can be good here. He has two copies of Reclamation Sage, and those are not particularly bad as they can take care of cards like Aqueous Form in this matchup that can really hurt. Outside of that, there's not too much that I would think he'd want to be using. Cards like Ashiok, Drown in Sorrow, Doomwake Giant don't seem particularly good here. Well, Drown in Sorrow can be really good on the play because it, it takes a little while for the, the ball to get rolling on the blue-white heroic side of the table. So if you're able to keep their board contained for, or, you know, they, they spend their early turns getting some stuff into play, they're not really growing it, and Drown in Sorrow can be really good there. So I think those are going to come in. I think the two Reclamation Sages are fine. Although a lot of the enchantments, the ordeals, they don't really hang around for very long. One Farika is okay, but as we saw, Joe's got a lot of ways to ignore blockers. So it's not something that Steven can lean on, but it's probably an upgrade over other cards in the deck. On Joe's side, what do we have? A Seeker of the Way, two more copies of Ordeal of, of Heliod, two Clay of Heresy, and a Race, two Laguna, Laguna, yeah, Laguna Bond Trailblazer, excuse me, and Ajani's Presence. An aqueous form, a singing bell strike, two copies of Summer Denial, a Negate, and a Treasure Cruise. I like bringing in the, I think the Treasure Cruise is pretty good here. I think the singing bell strike is reasonable as a target against a lot of mid-range strategies. The one is Johnny's Presence, pretty good answer against Hero's Downfall, Murderous Cut, and so forth. The additional, or the, sorry, one copy of a race rather, a lot of enchantments, of, of course, in Steven's deck. And I think the one copy of Treasure Cruise can come in in the long game. So, are cards like Ajani's Presence better than things like Stubborn Denial in this matchup? I th think so, because they can also help inside of combat, where Stubborn Denial does not help. I guess my other question is, how worried does Joe have? So Joe needs to protect his own creatures here. Yep. Can Does he have to worry about a card like Whip of Erebos? If man gets one down, can Steven just race Joe? It's possible, but it, it's tough to win that sort of game. I, I think it's, it's low, on the car, low on the list of cards Joe has to worry about. I, I think the Summer Denials are pretty bad against Sultai Reanimator in general. There's not that many spells, and, uh, you know, most of them can be paid for because they're not that expensive. So you really need to get a four-power creature in play before it does much of anything. I would definitely rather have Ajani's Presence over it. The only upside for Summer Denial that Ajani's Presence does not have is the ability to counter Whip of Erebos. Besides that, I think you're much better served just having Ajani's Presence. We'll be going to game two. Man will be on the play here. These players are at four and one, meaning they will need to win out from here to make it into the top eight. It's going to be a tough cut, and, you know, we've been looking at our players to watch. So many big names in attendance. A lot of them weren't even able to get on our players to watch board because we have so many big names. And, you know, this is round six, and I think for the rest of the day we're going to have feature matches like this. Two very good players, you know, two players who will be in our players' championship in two weeks, and... Uh, they're going to be in losing your done territory for the, the rest of the day. No way to avoid it in a field that's this relatively small, stacked with this many good players. Sure. In a lot of respects, it's almost like a preview for the Invitational. 
say before, that 12 next to Steven Mann's name, that's important right now due to the race we have going on, which will conclude next Saturday at our last Invitational. If you look at our leaderboard, this is the, the race for the SCG Players' Championship, which is in two weeks. So Kevin Jones, you see up there at the top, has a pretty strong hold on the Season 4 Points Championship. Nine more players will qualify at the end of next week's Invitational. So Kevin will be our season winner, almost certainly. We look at other names, Ross Miriam, Gerard Fabiano, Logan Mize, Kent Ketter, they're all looking pretty safe. But when we go to page two, we're going to look at the players that would really love to to shore things up. You see Jeff Hoagland, he's not here this weekend, nor is Jim Davis. Two players in attendance though, 11 and 12. The last two in right now are Brad Nelson and Steven Mann. He's at 12th right now. And I believe both players at X and one. So there is, as you can see, they do have a bit of a gap over Dylan Donegan, Andrew Tenshin, Eric Rill, and so forth. But a good performance here can really cement it because there's still the possibility of getting caught at the Invitational if things break in specific ways. All it takes is one, between Donegan, Rill, and Tenjum, it just takes one of those players to post an invite, say, make an invitational top eight run, and you don't want to be the guy in 12th if that happens. Exactly. So for, for Brad and, and Steven especially, uh, there's a lot riding on this tournament because they can really cement a spot at the Players' Championship yeah. with a good run this weekend. It's not so much what place, like, what they care about is you would like to be ninth or higher going into the last weekend. You don't want to, if someone makes a run, you don't want to be the guy in 12th, and you'd really prefer not to be the guy in 11th. I think if you're 10th or higher entering the Invitational, you are most more than likely safe. Yes, that's, that sounds right. Right now they are 11 and 12, so that's, that is why they're here this weekend. See Joe on the draw. He's the first player with a play, though. It's going to be Seeker of the Way on turn two. Man's first play is Courser of Crufix. We'll reveal a Seder Wayfinder. Pass the turn. And Joe has got through step one, which is untap with the creature in play. The game gets a lot easier from here. See a collection of creatures here for him. He has a copy of Heliod's Pilgrim, Battlewise Hoplite, Defiant Strike. who chooses to go with. It's always easy to see whether or not Joe has a basic land in his hand because of those beautiful revised basic arts he likes to play. For, for me, there's some amount of nostalgia because those are the first lands that I played with. Yeah. On the other side, they are pretty ugly. So it's tough. It's hard when you see the art on the flooded strand and then you look at the art on the plains and you say, you know, that's, that's really a similar looking card. It's, it's quite close. Hero of the Seeker of the Way swings in. Man does not want to lose that Corsair. He'll have no blocks. No reason. Even oh. something like Defiant Strike. Right. <laughs> which which Lissette has. Yep. Lissette had the option to ba make Battlewise Hoplite there instead of opting to play nothing. Does not want to take down Man at any point here. And so Man will keep developing. Here's Seder Wayfinder. Mills Farika. Does give him his choice of lands, however. I think that Steven had no land drop to make this turn otherwise, so this is a pretty big hit. And gets an opportunity to also flip over a new card to Corsair. Yeah. Takes the polluted delta, finds a land on top. Great, great sequencing here for Man. Taking the fetch land so that he can later on have a reset for the Corsair if he needs it. Shuffling is really valuable once there's a Corsair in play, so I like taking the delta there. Corsair will swing back. See Sidisi Brood Tyrant, the next draw here for Man. That also looking pretty good right now. Though, as we saw last game, it is not impossible for, for Joe to overwhelm even that. No, Steven had one on turn four on the play, made a zombie, got off two attacks, made zombies both of those attacks, and did end up losing. Yep. In pretty convincing fashion once it was all said and done. Seeker of the Way sings in again. Man will drop to 16. As long as the creature's a 2-2, he seems pretty content on just taking hits from it. It's just not a lot to be gained by getting involved in combat at this stage. And Joe will play more creatures. Had Hero of Aroas, but opted for Battlewise Hoplite. Hoplite, one of the best creatures in the deck to target, really. You get a counter and a scry every time you do it. They're all pretty sweet besides the Pilgrim. They've all got good stuff going on. <laughs> All right, scanning through Joe's hand, he has a copy, it looks like, of Erase, Heliod's Pilgrim, Feet of Resistance. Erase is going to go ahead and take care of the Corsair. 
waited until Steven's draw step. Yep, this way you got to see what Joe is, was drawing. If it's something like Whip of Erebos or Doomwake Giant, maybe he holds it because there's nothing coming and there's a land on top, which he doesn't want Steven to get for free. He's taking care of it now. Now, the concern there is by letting Steven see the card, Steven can now be smarter about cracking that fetch land he took last turn. Mm -hmm. So there is some give and take to that play. Given that there's other problematic enchantments in Steven's deck, I, I, yeah, like I like taking the look. I think it's worth it from Joe's side. And Steven doesn't really want to draw the land, so he's going to crack Polluted Delta here. Just finding more base the, the island. Doubling up on all his colors. It's really fun to watch this blue-white heroic deck in action when, when two good players are in the match because there's so much cat and mouse game going on. Yeah. With Steven is not willing to cast a removal spell in the face of open mana, and Joe's not willing to tap out. And right now I don't I think the only protection spells that Joe has are his feet of resistance. I think he's, he's playing a rather honest game. Steven makes a CDC and hits a zombie. Yeah. Now there's a second one. So Joe has Feet of Resistance, God's Willing, a Defiant Strike as his tricks. As his creatures, he has a Hero of Aurora's and a Heliod's Pilgrim. And a lot of his... Attacking power is centered on that Heliod's Pilgrim, so when he decides to use it will be pretty interesting. Here's a awfully bold attack. But he's doing this with God's Willing. Oh, yeah. Back up and I believe a Defiant Strike too, so this we is, might see some fireworks this turn. This is when if you're Steve, you know, if you're Steven, you eventually, you, you can't just let him, you have to call him eventually. And you have one mana left over at the end of your turn. It's a pretty good spot. Question is, does Steven have the murderous cut here? He's representing it. Joe has to be careful of that. So a double block on Seeker the way. Joe will use what looks like to be his feet of resistance. Try to score the two for one here. So we'll get put a 1-1 one, one counter on Seeker. It'll prowess up to a 4-4, and it will get protection from the color of Joe's choice. So if as, it works. As things stand, this does just clean up both of Steven's blockers, and Joe does not lose the Seeker. Now, if I have a murderous cut and I'm Steven Man, I, I probably want to use it here, even if I don't expect that it's going to work. Because Seeker of the Way is a fine creature to have Joe spend a card on. Yeah. You know, Joe can, he's going to use the cut. Joe can use the God's Willing here, but Steven's, that trade, the God's Willing for Murderous Cut trade is bound to happen at some point. And this is not a bad spot to do it where, you know, the creatures that Steven's losing inside of combat aren't really critical to him. He's not taking a lot of damage this turn as a result, so not a bad spot to pick a fight. So God's Willing will give him protection from black, counter the Murderous Cut. Now the Seeker will be a 5-5, five -five, thanks to two prowess triggers. With lifelink, it'll take down both the blockers. Steven will take two, go to 12, Joe up to 22. But by losing both feet and God's willing, Joe has exhausted his protection. Exactly, and now you see, you know, Soul Tide Charm in Steven's hand. He might be able, to, if he can find another removal spell or just blockers, maybe able to manage this board. Gets to swing with Sidisi. There's a lot of good things going on here for man. DC will attack. It mills a Sylvan carry at it. That'll get him a zombie. Starts a new on the life total, down to 19 for yep. Joe. But rather than killing something, Steven's just going to play a giant creature of his own. This one's Soul of Innistrad. Okay. We're taking it to the streets. It's a 6 6. <laughs> you got it. That's going to be, you know, there's a Hornet Queen in the graveyard. If Joe doesn't hurry up and win here, Steven's going to start really making haymakers. Well, the problem is that hurrying up and, and winning is something this deck's very good at. And you see yeah. the Pilgrim in hand. Joe can go ahead and if he goes and gets something like an Aqueous Form and puts it on the Hoplite, 
The Hoplite cannot be killed by the Sultai Charm because it's an ultimate price. Now, I just want to throw something out here. Uh, if you've been following us today for our first five rounds, and all of our first five rounds say, I believe the winner of every match we've had on camera has either been a Whip of Erebos deck or a Just Guy Tokens deck. If Joe can take down this game, we'll see that there is <laughs> there will be another winner this weekend. It's at least three decks floating around. That said, this unlike the other matchups where I feel like these Whip of Erebos decks are strong favorites, this is the first time I've watched the Whip decks, and I've thought maybe I'd rather be the other guy. I feel the same way. I, don't know, I do not think this matchup is great for the Whip decks. I think it can be OK for some of the white base builds, the Obzon builds that can board into more sweepers. Sure. But I think Soul Tie is in trouble in this matchup. And the play from Joe is going to be Heliod's Pilgrim. That'll find his one of Aqueous form. And it looks like he's going to cast it on Battlewise Hoplite, spreading his counters around a bit. Another Aqueous form on top of his deck. Does he want it or not? I mean, if he's worried about Soul Tide Charm, it's a really good card to pick up because Steven does have the option of just blowing up the Aquas' form and blocking, so. Exactly. Battlewise Hoplite will come in for three. Man drops down to nine. Joe ignores his Scry Trigger. He already has the card he wants. Back to Man. Has this little Charm. Draw for the turn was a Swamp. But he does have a 6-6 six, six Death Toucher. If he can somehow manage to block creatures, he'll be well positioned for combat. Not to mention, he has just a lot of power on the table. He maybe can race. Yeah, no, he's got a, I, I mean, it's, it is a lot of power. It's 11 with, most likely it's going up to 13. Can Steven just race here? Well, murderous. I think the murderous cut alongside the Soul Tide Charm is, is going to be too much for Joe to overcome here. Enough spot removal can get it for him. You're absolutely right. Between these Sultai Charms, Murderous Cuts, and Hero's Downfalls, looks like the magic number may be three for Steven. The third one is the one that gets it for him. Swing, he's going to leave back the zombie. This time, he, so CDC does not make a blocker. So it'll just be nine points. Only nine? Only nine. A mere nine points? Yeah, that's easy. Joe will chump the soul. So he just takes three, goes to 16. And now, does Steven dare to let Joe untap, or does he just kill things? With a position this commanding, I would be inclined to just, just kill his stuff. Sorcery speed, both the kill spells? I think so. Looks like Steven's going to go for whip. He's going to delve it fully. What that tells me here is that if, he, if that's the play he makes, He's leaving up enough mana to activate Soul of Innistrad. Instead, it looks like he's going to pay. I'm not sure how much he'd need to activate Soul. There's, like I said, the best, most appealing thing in his graveyard is a bunch of cheap blockers and or a Hornet Queen. Yeah. And I don't think that, that Steven really needs to get that fancy here. Because the 6-6 Death Hunter is going to be enough to take this over once Joe has no board. Yeah. So two kill spells, and exactly, that was exactly what he did. He think, feels he's ahead enough that he's just going to mow everything down. Now on Joe's side, that draw of form way less threatening. No, I would not rule Joe out of this game just yet. He's not facing lethal this turn. He has another Aquas form. Yeah. If Steven does not have a removal spell, it's very possible for Joe to just kill him next turn. He's going to cast Ordeal of Heliod on the hero. Yeah, he has the remaining two cards are Aqueous Form and Defiant Strike. I suppose the reason to strike here would be if a Temple's on top of his deck, he'd want to draw that. But I think he might need the, the plus one next turn. It's close. He's just going to put, and he does, he's going to put Aqueous Form on he, it now. He always has the option of just Defiant Striking in his own upkeep and putting a Temple on the bottom. So he sure. kind of gets the best of both worlds regardless. And the one point of damage could really matter. Back over to Man. His hand is just a Sidisi and a land. 
That's not going to do much, but his board is threatening. And all, all Sifu can do is generate blockers. That's, that's all he can do, and that doesn't matter right now against Aquas' form. So, yep, Mills 3, one of them is a creature. He'll get a zombie. He'll deal 11 to Joe. That's Joe. Well, Joe actually, Joe can block, which he probably will do. I wouldn't risk it. Any block means that Drown and Sorrow is turned back on. And next turn, it's either Joe wins next turn or he's dead anyway. The question, I guess, would be can Joe buy, if he buy blocking, can he buy himself another turn here? If a creature's on top, I guess it can. The ordeal will crack and gain him 10, so he's not actually dead next turn. Sure. No, that, is, that is true, yeah. He, gets, he probably gets a second turn out of it if he blocks, so. Man now with options. He does have a Sidisi in hand. He also can use Soul, cast a two drop, and then make a Hornet Queen or something next turn. Or he can just replace his Sidisi. Whatever puts the most damage into play because uh, there's nothing to be gained by blocking. So the only thing that matters is what generates the fastest block. Then it's Sidisi. Yeah, and, and I, think I think it's Sidisi. Even though she's just really a, just a, a hill giant here. Well, sorry, a 5-5, five five rather. She does, she, the mill trigger does hit, makes another zombie. Yep. It's not a bad deal, but... Let's see Joe down to 8. Draw appears to be, I want to say it's a God's Willing. Yep. I was really surprised to see Joe not use the Defiant Strike inside of his own upkeep, because I think all the, the cards were on the table there. Right now, his creature will be 5, 6, 7. If... If he God's Willings first here and finds another targeting spell... Never mind, yeah. He, does, he doesn't actually have the... Yeah. Pro Black, so we'll watch this play out here. Yep. So he's going to scry. He wants to find another targeter. The planes isn't going to do it. Right now, his creature is a 5-5. Five five. Excuse me. He was a point short with any random targeted spell, so... Yes. If his Defiant Strike finds another targeting spell here, he will win. He has it at 5 on 6... It'll gain six off the attack from the ordeal. Seven, eight from the Defiant Strike. With, if this Defiant Strike hits, it, that's, num that's number nine. There we go. So he is up to a six, six. Ordeal will crack. Joe will go to 18. And he still has the ability here to scry first. Yep, and Joe, that's why he's doing this in combat. He wants, he's, he's going to first, he wants to scry with the Aquas form before he uses the Defiant Strike. Yep. It does take away a couple outs. If there was a ordeal, or yeah. If there was an ordeal, that won't work. But the scry, I think, too, <laughs> too valuable. If he just made it main face, he'd have it there. I mean, that's where you just have to count your outs. It's, it's just some math there if as to which one you're supposed to do. If Joe was going to defy and strike anyway, then I think he should have just done it straight away. Well, it depends how many targets he has. It's just, right, you can just, you can just crunch that one out. I don't... That looks like it's going to be eight points of damage. I think he's found a Johnny's Presence. And that'll do it. A Johnny's Presence will be 9-10. You have it. Joe Lissette, two zero defeats Steven Mann. He stays alive for a top eight. And he, this is the first time that we've seen a, a Whip of Erebo strategy fail this weekend, and I think this matchup's just challenging for the Reanimator deck. Yeah. As you can tell, both these decks are very good at blocking Sultai and Abzan, but when the heroic deck is, is firing on all cylinders, you can't really block. It puts a lot of pressure on your murderers, cuts in your heroes' downfalls. Yeah, one of the things that these Abzan Reanimator and Sultai Reanimator decks have really had going for them is that they, you can't fight on the ground versus them. Yeah, it's, it's true, and... Uh, Steven got a lot of pressure to play. He had a lot of quality blockers, but that was not enough to stop the onslaught. He needed more spot removal and even drew a fair amount. He had a murderous cut. He had a soul tide charm. That's a lot for his deck. There's not really that much spot removal in it, but it was not enough to weather the storm. And I think one of the things you can see this blue eye heroic deck benefiting from, especially if you're playing like Joe Lissette's deck, is some of the decks he doesn't want to see are things like Mardu, for example. That deck's 